Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hello, this is Buddy C. Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. Today we have Brian and Drew and Pilp. Good to have you, Pilp. Glad to see a new face. Guys, you're all welcome to join us. We record on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can find the link at our private Facebook group by the same name, Dow of Our Understanding. Or you can email me at info at buddyc.org and I'll get that link to you. A lot of other resources at buddyc.org. You're welcome to take a look at those things and any of those benefit you, please use them. Please use them. They're there for your, to benefit you and to help you in your journey in recovery. Today, we will be discussing the 60th verse of the Tao Te Ching. Brian, you want to, we to do our normal, take us sure. to Eric Lynn and uh, I'll get Drew to read Stephen Mitchell, and I'll read Jonathan Starr. And Pip, if you have a version that you like and would care to read, you're more than welcome to. We're just relaxed about this thing. We're going to see what it speaks to us today. Brian, you want to start? Sure. Ruling a large country is like cooking a small fish, using the Tao to manage the world. Its demons have no power. Not only do its demons have no power, its gods do not harm people. Not only do its gods not harm people, the sages also do not harm people. They both do no harm to one another. So virtue merges and returns. Thank you, Brian. No. This is Jonathan Starr. Govern a nation as you would fry a small fish. When Tao is present in the empire, dark spirits lose their power. It's not that they have no power. It's that their power can't harm anyone. When Tao is present, the people enjoy the blessings of heaven. They find unity. They find peace. What's this about spirits doing harm? The sage is approaching, and they're rushing in to sweep his path. Hmm. Sounds almost like a Cohen, doesn't it? Drew? Governing a large country is like frying a small fish. You spoil it with too much poking. Center your country in the Tao, and evil will have no power. Not that it isn't there, but you'll be able to step out of its way. Give evil nothing to oppose, and it will disappear by itself. Thank you, Drew. I'll read my interpretation. Pursue love. Running our lives is like cooking a small fish. Less is better. We're not godless or evil, but fearful and directionless. What is the solution? We ignore fear and pursue love. With time, the fear we see diminishes. A path of love becomes uncomplicated and effortless. Isn't that how, I know it's how it works for me. Fear diminishes and the path of love becomes uncomplicated and effortless. You know, the real change in my life I normally see after the fact right? I don't see it while it's going on. I see it. Oh, I behave differently. That's the change that's happening in me. That's way beyond my control. Any other translations? Let's just read the Stephen Mitchell and we'll, we'll talk about it from, from that one. First stanzas governing a large country is like frying a small fish. You spoil it with too much poking. 
How about our lives? Governing my life is like frying a small fish. Less is better. My interference in my life usually does not bring about the result that I want. We've talked about that before. There's a big difference between cooking a small, frying a small fish and frying a big fish. If you've ever fried a small fish, you don't fry it very much. You have to pay attention to it. You don't get in there and prod around on it, and keep checking it. You flip it in a minute or two and you're done. So in other words, you're not. You're allowing the fish to cook, but you have to pay a lot of attention to it not to overcook, which is what I think of when I see this idea of frying the fish. And my life is much like that. I have to govern my life in the same way. Doesn't take much effort on my part, but I do have to pay attention. See, that's the, I think that's where we get hung up with this we or i'll just speak for me when i first heard effortless effort wu way i thought how can that be I, i've got to be does it mean i do nothing when you cook a small fish are you doing nothing no you're doing something but what are you doing well you're allowing it to cook you're not poking and prodding and checking and like is it done yet is it done yet you know all of those things much more of an oversight and allowing it to cook than than showing a lot of skill in cooking right true yeah, I, I think one of the things that um, comes to my mind with this analogy is trusting trust basically trusting that things that that you put into motion are going to be okay without your constant interference. Uh, trusting that that things that are happening will be will be fine without without always without always poking and prodding and making sure that everything's okay and you know you you can keep your attention on it, but like you said, you don't always need to be doing. You can you can just be being while everything's going on around you, um, but not not being checked out, not being you know you, your your mind doesn't need to be off in the clouds because the next thing you know everything's smoking, everything's on fire, and you know fish is disintegrated and all that. So just you know trust and awareness, I think is is kind of what this is getting at for me. Oh, awareness that's good you know it also says that you spoil it by too much poking so it's not only that we don't have to we don't need to our interference makes things worse yes <laughs> you, know, you poke it too much and the juices all seep out awareness not excessive effort hmm. thank you drew Brian? Yeah, I was just reflecting on what Drew said. There's a guy that posts a gratitude list in a forum where I like to post mine. It's it's actually where Paul posts. And but anyway, the title of his list is Everything is Already Okay. And when I read that, I thought, hmm. You know, and it kind of relates to this, to what Drew said. I mean, every everything is already okay in my mind. So as long as I let go of that control and show up, show up and get out of the way. I guess that's Wu Wei. Everything is already okay. Okay. Used to, when I would have heard that, Brian, I would have thought, it's okay, but it could be better. You know, when I hear a be phrase better. like that, you know, it's okay, but I would like it to be like this. Yeah. It's enough for me to get by, but it's not the very best. You know, yeah. that whole thinking 
Yeah. I've had to shift that thinking. Everything could not be better. That's what okay means for me now. Mm -hmm. And that comes, I think, from, for me, realizing that in this moment, that everything is just as it can be. Not maybe should, but because should would imply it could be different or that I have to accept this because, you know, this is, you know, this beyond my control, that kind of almost a scarcity. And I never have liked that because saying should for me means that it could be a different way. That's just in my head, maybe instead I like the way Byron Katie looks at it. It just is. How is it right now? And does it really need to be different right now in this moment? And I find that my unhappiness comes from a lack of acceptance of the moment, really. I'm in there poking the fish, right? Saying, come on and cook. I got to check it and make sure it's okay. That's for me. That's a lot of fear talking. Not just being with what's going on, knowing from experience that this is how you do it. Maybe I'm reading too much in cooking a fish. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not the first time I've complicated the hell out of something. Anything else for that first stanza? Pip, you have something? Yeah. It's making me think the same, the same kind of things. You spoil it with too much poking that I, I guess you could apply it to any any part of your life the part that it's really just pops into my mind is like relationships any human relationship and it's that it's that are you okay am I okay you know just constantly checking checking is everything okay and actually you keep asking those questions and you make it not okay when you do that right but you still have to pay attention Maybe like Brian was saying, you also can't just assume it's going to be okay or you can't cook a fish and then say, right, the rule is that it's going to be 10 minutes or I'm just, I can ignore it until, until it's, you know, whatever the rule that you've set yourself, you still have to watch it without, without interfering in it. Yeah, it's tricky. Thank you, Pip. So my role with cooking the fish that I can learn to apply to the rest of my life. The first, I think, is what you mentioned, Drew, about awareness. You know, for me, that starts with, am I available in my meditation time or my devotional time? Do I make myself available? Because if I don't make myself available, how can I be aware? And that really works for me. I make myself available today. I am open to being of being helpful to others. And just that vein of affirmations that start bubbling up when you start. They bubble up for me as I start down that path. And moving from that human doing to a human being. One thing that this whole spiritual journey has taught me is that less of me is almost always better. I even go as far as to say less of me is always better. Seems yeah. not almost always. I want it to be almost because I want to keep a little bit of control of it. You know? <laughs> uh, almost always. No, always better. Anything else in that first stanza? I mean, uh, there's something interesting about it being a small fish as well. You know, if governing a large country is if really, that's just a metaphor for being, you know, your own personal life. Then there's something for me about, well, why aren't I frying a big fish? Why, why haven't I got a steak? What, you know, why, am, <laughs> why do I have to just do this with a small fish? You know, maybe this is fine, but. I guess that's the getting out of your own way 
that you often talk about here of just being like no i'm cooking a small fish now that's fine you know that's that's good because otherwise you start thinking about yeah what else you could be eating that's good Pip. our life is like the small fish right we want to think it's a big fish but it's not it's a small fish <laughs> i want the big t-bone do what well, for me, it could be if I was better, somebody would be cooking my fish for me. <laughs> you know? Yes. And, you know, when you're cooking a small fish, you don't have time to do all those other things. You, oh, well, I need to season it with this. I need to do this. No. If you've ever fried a small fish, you have got to pay attention and it fries very quick. Very quick. Buddy, I was reading this, looking at some commentary on this this part about the demons have no power. Derek Lynn says that the demons of negativity still exist, but they cannot exert their harmful influence. Hmm. That's where Mitchell's talking about center your country in the Tao and evil will have no power. Mm -hmm. Not that it isn't there, but you'll be able to step out of its way. So if I center my life, let's say in compassion, because that for me, that's a good synonym for the Tao Mm -hmm. or virtue. If you want to say virtue, just compassionate living, really Mm -hmm. center your life and compassionate living and evil will have no power. Not that it isn't there, but you'll be able to step out of its way. I remember in the past, I could see it coming. I mean, I could see it like a train coming right toward me, but I couldn't avoid it. (laughs) I knew what was coming. You know, someone would bait me about something and man, I would jump right in there every time even though I knew what the outcome was going to be. I had no choice. I had no freedom from me. And compassionate living provides freedom for me from having to do those things that, that I slave to myself. Really? Mm -hmm. I do not have to be that. I can step out of the way now where I could not step out of the way before. Hmm. We've been studying step six and seven, which for me are the change steps. I'll read those right quick. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And seven humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. You know, if I have a problem with a God word in this, I could say we're entirely ready to have compassion remove all these defects of character humbly ask compassion to remove our shortcomings what what that means for me is i see that step six is about our defects of character so that would be the if you want to call them sins or the fears of commission i believe And seven, the shortcomings would be omission. So six might be, now I know you can send me an email saying that Bill Wilson meant the same thing, and I've read all of that, which is fine. Uh, It helps me to divide it up between the two. In other words, six would be about that I stop kicking my dog. (laughs) And seven would be, I start doing nice things for my dog. (laughs) You know, you see the difference. The, the, the six is I stop doing the bad behavior and set, or I allow the bad behavior to be removed. It's not that I stop. I allow. And seven would be, I allow good habits to form. And both of those happen when I choose compassion over fear. When I react, instead of reacting with anger, I say, hmm, what would compassion do in this situation? Why am I angry? Why, 
well, what am I afraid of? And I said, oh, I'm afraid that they won't like me when they find this out about or whatever the case. Then I start seeing that. And then, and then other times, um, let's say I, I do something kind when I normally would not. Let's say I speak to the person I really don't want to speak to and just be friendly, just little things. We, we think that this compassionate living is all of these big things, but it's not. For me, it's what am I doing in this moment? What, am, what, what, what when the next moment arises, is it possible for me to show compassion in some way? I don't have to make something happen, but I can take that attitude all of the time. And I think that's what that's about. Pip used to talk about relationships. For me, that would mean if I'm asking, okay, okay, that's probably because I'm afraid it's not. When if my attitude was, how can I show love to my partner? I'm not going to make something happen, but I'm available. That's a whole different attitude than me acting out of fear. For me, that's the difference between six and seven. And that's managing my life like a small fish. Hmm. So I center myself in compassion and evil has no power. I can see that. You know, evil's available all the time. It's like a guy I know that's been sober many, many, many years, very spiritual guy. He says, hey, I still have my asshole suit in the closet. I can get it out at any time. It's still there, you know, but I have more of the ability to step out of its way now than I used to. Drew? So that all reminds me after, after our chats on Saturday mornings, I go straight to a rec center in the neighborhood to play pickleball. It's indoors. There are three courts set up and there's, you know, usually 15, 20 people who show up and we take turns playing. And everybody there is really nice, really kind, really, you know, really fun to talk to, except one woman. She is mean and cruel and makes fun of people, laughs when people fall down, laughs when she finds out somebody's not there because they're sick or they're injured, picks on new people. She's just just not uh, not somebody who I would ever, ever want to spend time with. And I, I'll find that I'm just, my attention is on her so much to the exclusion of the 15 or 20 people who, you know, who I actually, who I enjoy spending time with. But, you know, I'm just, just watching her, thinking about her, just upset at her. And that, you know, that, that has an effect on my enjoyment there. So sometimes, you know, I can be aware of that and I can, you know, what helps me be, you know, a little better mentally is just, just ignoring her, just letting her do her thing, you know, focusing on the people whose presence I enjoy, you know, that helps me. But then there, there are other times where I, you know, I decide to be on her team. I'm I'm her partner and you know, I help her win a game and I compliment her on good shots and you know, we work together as a team and you know, she might she might laugh at our opponent if they you know, if they miss a shot or something. Which I don't I don't like, I don't encourage, but you know, I can I can help her out. I can be nice to her. I can say some kind words to her, uh, even though I just personally do not like her at all. And that, that kind of reminds me of one of the translations. I think Buddy read the translation about sweeping the, sweeping the path, you know, clearing the path for you know, evil. I don't, I, I wouldn't call her evil, but, you know, just, just making, making her life a little better, you know, giving her some compliments, helping her, uh, helping her have fun, helping her win a game, 
that's you know that all that always does make me feel a little better I, I don't go into it with the intention to try to change her at all i'm I, i'm i'm smarter than that but you know if i can if i can say some kind words i can be nice i can you know get my mindset out of you know being all upset at her and wishing she would change and you know, wishing she weren't there you know accepting that she is there and treating her kind of how i'd like to be treated you know that's that that always helps helps me out hey drew you said something that i thought was interesting there too in that as you do these things it's not making her day better it's making your day better because you're not focusing on how disruptive she is and how mean she is it's making you have a more enjoyable day playing pickleball we lose sight of that that all of these practices may help another person but they always help us always always help us i've never had a time that i've shown compassion and regretted it never has that happened doesn't mean i'm a doormat doesn't mean you know those things but it does mean that i am able to let go through being compassionate like you're talking about uh, let go of some anger let go of some fear because really i can't do both at the same time can I? i can't be showing compassion in the moment and be fearful in the past or the future all in the same moment it doesn't work like that for me it, i'm in the present moment, present moment. every time yeah odds yeah. are she's hurting oh sure yeah yeah deep down inside uh, yeah I've, I've i've had that thought and that's you know that that leads to a little more compassion from me for sure it's, it's making me think about the part of myself that's a mean pickle you know that partnering like you're saying drew partnering that person that you don't like or that you find difficult you have to do that in the outside world but then there's also a part of you that is this for, uh, for me anyway this mean pickle player you know who i don't <laughs> like and i've always you know you try to pushing that away doesn't work mm-hmm. and you have to make friends with it and then that that is it Stephen Mitchell? That part about yeah, evil will having no power. It has all the power when you try and when you don't want to play on the same team, mm-hmm. and then as soon as you do, it's it's still there, and you can rail as much as you want about having to play with it, but it's not going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Pip. I like what Jonathan Starr says about that. When Tao is present, the people enjoy the blessings of heaven. They find unity. They find peace. Doesn't say they create it. They just find it as if it was there the whole time, right? They just found it. They didn't make it happen. It's like people saying they found God. Well, where was he? Was he hiding from you? What was the deal? (laughs) Makes no sense to me. I found God. All right. Well, where was he? Let me know. (laughs) Which bush was he behind? You know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We find unity and peace. It says from when the Tao is present. So if we could say when compassion is present, people enjoy the blessings of heaven. Or heaven is being the, the spiritual sphere that's around us when when love's present we enjoy peace and unity we can't help it if we're walking in compassion because you don't know what that other person's going through yeah you know brian i don't even have to think about the other person if in reality yeah 
I just have to open my heart to how can I be helpful right now? If it does something for them or not, it's none of my business. Yeah. It's none of my, you know, and if we get to the point to where, and this is difficult for me too, because I see people that are hurting and I want them to stop hurting. I see someone who's being angry. If I'm not pushing back, I want their anger to stop. I want to fix the situation in some way, either by me pushing Mm -hmm. or by me showing compassion, let's say, or do like Drew. I like the pickleball example. That's a good one, Drew. You know, either way, we're wanting to originally, I would want to be fixing that person. Well, well, if I start showing that person compassion, then then they'll change and they won't beat this, you know, but you know, my head goes off into you know, all of that stuff. But in reality, I don't know what difference that's going to make in their life. It may make zero difference, and it's really none of my business if it does or not. My job in this moment, see, because if I'm off in that, I'm off in the future and I can't enjoy the, the moment, which is the whole point of compassion anyway, I think, is to show us how to just be where we are, to step out of the way. We can only step in this moment. So we have to be present. Hmm. Giving evil. Let's talk about this last little phrase for a second. Giving evil nothing to oppose. And it will disappear by itself. They both do no harm to one another. So virtue merges and returns. Uh, To go up a little bit, not only its gods do not harm people, not only do its gods not harm people, the sages also do not harm people. So the gods aren't harming, the sages aren't harming. They both do no harm to one another, so virtue merges and returns. If you give evil nothing to oppose, then virtue will return by itself. Or the way Guy Guy Fu Fang translates that, they do not hurt each other, and the virtue in each one refreshes both. That's good. How do we give evil nothing to oppose? That's the real question, right? I think part of it is is not seeing things as evil, you know, not making that judgment. You know, the the big concept in the whole Tao Te Ching for me is is not not judging, you know, good or bad or evil or holy or, you know, whatever you want to say. But getting out of that judgment, you know, seeing something as evil, you know, I'm going to fixate on that thing. And the more I fixate on it, the more I want it to change, the more uh, upset I am about its existence to begin with. And if I can just accept that that thing is, then, you know, I won't want it to change as much. I can accept it more. So I, I think that's one of the first steps is just looking at it you know do i need to call this thing evil do i need to call this thing bad and then you know the the next line not that it isn't there you know i kind of see that as uh, an, an admission by Lao Tzu that yeah there is some evil out there which I, I think is a little curious because so so much of the Tao Te Ching seems to be you know there isn't really evil there isn't really you know non evil everything's just kind of is and we put our judgments on it and that's what creates evil so the line not that it isn't there you know yeah there is going to be some evil there but you'll be able to step out of its way. Um, so it is an acknowledgement that there are some evils out there, you know, the Holocaust, you know, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. You know, there are some evils out there, but, you know, you can accept it. You can see, you know, yes, this thing happened. You know, what can I do to try to ensure that it doesn't happen again? You know, that I'm not, I'm not a part of, 
of, of that thing occurring again that I'm not, you know, I'm not helping to bring to bring some evil into the world or to help it flourish. So yeah, this this whole stanza has given me a lot to think about. Hey Drew, have you considered, you know, most of the time we're talking good and bad. Maybe evil is something different. Evil, it'd be like saying fear as evil. Let's let's think of I think of fear as being evil. You could be synonymous, maybe, that we're always going to have the opportunity to be fearful. I don't think that will ever leave that I don't have the opportunity. But do I have to react to my fear or can I let it pass the opportunity or let the opportunity pass on by? I'm kind of thinking about it that way instead of the good and bad. That, yeah, I, I can see that. So self self centered thinking. Yes. To the to the point of, you know, making yourself the, you know, making your your happiness your, what you think is best for you. Putting that first and foremost, yeah. at the exclusion of, you know, of just of just letting things be. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about it that way, but uh, I see that. You know, page 84 in the big book talks about selfishness, dishonesty, and resentment and what to do about those things. Personally, when I see fear in my life, it's either one of those three. I call those the weapons of fear. The only weapons fear has come in the forms of selfishness, dishonesty, or resentment. Every time I react to fear, I, I see it in one of those three ways. So when I have the opportunity to be dishonest, and, and it happens out of the blue sometimes, you know, there'd be something that I have not acted on in a dishonest way in years. And all of a sudden, I'll have the idea about someone, and, and this little thought will come to mind. Well, why don't you just do xxx and nobody would know yeah why don't you add some expenses to this part so that you can pay less tax nobody will know you have a good accountant anyway he'll negotiate anything with the irs don't worry about it I said, whoa wait a minute where did that come from <laughs> <laughs> you know i have the opportunity all the time to act on these things but now I have the tools that allow me sometimes to step out of the way. So those opportunities are always there. They never leave. It's just my susceptibility to them, maybe. that dimension. And sometimes the same opportunities arose that arose years ago, and I bit that now I don't bite. It made, it made me think, buddy, about the way out of that like you're saying being the the compassion you know and the compassion you could be compassionate to something that's evil or something that's good but when i read that last bit of give evil nothing to oppose it's thinking on like a on a personal level rather than like a big level that's making me think like oh you you this is saying you like create or you you strengthen that evil part of you when you try to be good good in like a you know very pure static people think of me as good i'm like saintly kind of you know it's nothing to do with actions it's nothing to do with cooking a small fish it's all grand ideas of yourself as being this good person and then when you think of yourself as this good person then you've created then you made the situation where you can be this bad person and when you stop trying to think of yourself as this good person then there's nothing for that evil part to oppose there's no and and probably the method you know the way out of that is the is the compassion but as soon as I start thinking of myself as good or I've done something good then I'm like oh no now I've now it's like there's the opportunity to for it to flip I could flip back the other way Mm -hmm. thank you pip you know I, I think when we talk about compassionate living i don't know if my 
motives will ever be 100% pure. Just speaking for me, I think over time they become purer. And sometimes I think they're very pure. And then I'll do something. I think, well, they're not even going to, you know, and I expect a response out of them in some way. <laughs> like, oh, it's still there. But I think the, uh, I can't wait to live compassionately until I can do it 100% correct because that's never going to happen. What I have to do, and this is the great thing about recovery, I learned the principle of acting my way into right thinking rather than what I used to think was thinking my way into right acting or or believing my way into right acting really was it for me. You know, if I always thought that you through my my Christian beliefs that developed a relationship with God, I started doing the right, disciplining myself to do the right things. And when I changed within, then I would start loving people. Then I would start like it was the last on the list. And if I did it before that, I was being hypocritical in some way. That was kind of the process was the opposite. Now, what I've learned in recovery is it doesn't matter what I believe. It doesn't matter uh, what I think. It doesn't even matter if I think it's going to work or not. If I just take the action, I start changing. It might take a while, but I start changing. Uh, It's seen in Buddhism from the story of Sono, which we've talked about before. Thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. You guys want to hear that story? Look it up. I'm sure you can find it on the internets out there somewhere. It's where I picked it up. And actually, I picked it up from a Stephen Mitchell book, too. But this idea of being grateful, of taking action when we don't believe it, is what helps me to change. That is really how I give nothing to oppose. I, for some reason, I'm thinking of the nothing to oppose as, you know, a hat rack. You know, you walk in to a room and it's got a peg on the wall. You put your hat on the peg, well, or your coat. How do you get rid of the peg? So there's nothing to catch it. That That's kind of the way I think of the nothing to oppose for whatever reason. The way I get rid of the peg is by acting my way into right thinking, which they say a little different. They say it centering on the Tao, which is exactly what we're talking about. How can, and it's not, how can I be compassionate all day? It's how can I, let's use the word helpful. How can I be helpful in this moment? Okay, in this moment, we can all be helpful no matter what moment we're in. For me, that would be how can I listen and how can I respond with something helpful? Not I will listen and then I will pontificate on something spiritual so that I look, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's how I can be helpful right now. And and for me in a meeting of any kind, it goes Me listening to the person is so helpful to me and to others because I'm showing that they care, that they matter, you know, and that is so important for me to do with anyone because used to, I never listened to anyone. I just was waiting on them to finish so I could say whatever I wanted to say. (laughs) Y'all probably weren't that bad. I'm sure that that wasn't Mm -hmm. what y'all, y'all did, uh, yeah, I didn't care what you said. I just wanted you to finish so I could say what I wanted to say. Mm. Yes. Throw in a should. Do what? I said throw in a should. Yes. Yeah. You should. Actually, I don't even know how to, I, I, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you ought to do or yeah. what you should do, yeah. this will fix all your problems because I know. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Write it a little differently, Brian, so it wouldn't sound so overt, but yes. Yeah. And if they didn't want to listen, it was on them. They, you know, they yeah. grew up anyway, so you just move on to somebody yeah. else. 
you think would listen. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> you know, my, my wife told me one time, she said, Brian, there's a way to tell somebody to kiss your ass without directly telling them to kiss your ass. And I wasn't in a place where I could hear that. But, you know, I hear people in recovery talk about, and I've heard her talk about it, you know, like what, what I'm, I'm fixing to say to somebody, is it kind? Is it going to be helpful? You know, is it me just fixing to teach a lesson, spew something out hurtful to somebody? If there's one thing I regret when raising my children, I made everything a lesson. If I had that to do over or ever have the opportunity, I won't approach child rearing in that way. Everything had to be mm-hmm. a lesson. I mean, everything. Granted, there needs to be lessons, but there needs to be times it's just love. Yeah. So, it um, doesn't need to be, I'm teaching you a lesson because what you did is wrong. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's good. Any other comments, guys? It's been a great discussion today. Thanks, guys, yeah, for was good. the conversation. Hope to see you next week. Thank you. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars. Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery.